Hey everybody, my name is Vijay and welcome to Sandtube 3D, your best resource for all things 3D printing related. So today I'm going to share my support settings with you guys. I think I've got it down to where my supports are very easily removable and they don't leave that nasty layer on the model itself so there's less cleanup to do. Okay, so let's jump right into it. So the first thing you want to do is of course open up Kira, bring up your profile and then go down to generate support right here. Make sure this is checked off, and once you check it off, you'll see a bunch of values, or these values right here actually pop up, and the numbers are filled out for you, okay? So if you want, go ahead and feel free to copy these, but I will go over it with you as well. Now, if there's something here that you do not see, don't freak out. You can add this to your column by going here, clicking on this little what I call gyro or wheel. Uh, you can just go and click on it. Uh, type in what you need or you can scroll down the support section and just have it checked off okay so once you've checked off everything that you want it'll show up here and these are the values you're gonna put in but before we get started just to let you know the support density and the support Z distance are the two main things that are gonna affect how your supports are removed and how easily they're removed but first let's go ahead and jump right into it and go over the values so of course you need generated supports checked off support placement of course everywhere support overhand angle angle so what this basically means is that one point at what point do you need the supports to be added to your model now my printer which is the cr10 actually is great up to 60 and after 60 it needs it but i leave it at 55 just in case there's certain prints where the 60 just doesn't cut it and that has happened a few times so i just leave my angle at 55 but that would be up to you guys um, support pattern again up to you this is not a big deal it doesn't really matter but I go with grid density is going to be seven density is the strength of your support and then the Z distance basically what that is is the gap between the model and the support and that's a point two next one's zero the thickness will be 0.16 infill steps will be zero and these three will be checked off which is a support interface support roof and support floor now the only two things that you really have to pay attention to and keep in mind this actually corresponds with your speed that's what a lot of people don't understand the support density is the main thing and that again corresponds with your speed what do i mean by that okay so this is basically the strength of your support uh, if your speed's super high then this number needs to be high if it's low then you can lower the number so the less or the lower the number is here the easier it is to remove but if you go too low then your supports won't print properly and you'll have gaps in the support or the little stringiness or it'll be super weak to where your model will not look good so you need to work that out but I have done it for you right here so what I say right here you guys can follow or you can test it out yourself now I never go past 10 there's no reason to ever go past 10 here um, what my settings normally are is if I ever print between 40 and 45, I change this to a 5. Anytime I'm printing from 45 to 50, I go to 6. 50 to 55, I go to 7. Anything above 55, um, I go 8, 9. And if your speed is like at 60 something, then you can go 10. But what this is basically the... Support density, the lower the number, again, it's the easier to remove. So most of you should be printing at around 50 speed anyways, because that's what I print. That gives you better quality and easy to remove support, okay? So with that said, I know what you're thinking. Well, these are just numbers. So what? I can input this. I can make them up. Well, I'm going to show you a large print that I did that the model basically didn't even touch the bed. And I printed a raft, of course, to hold my supports. And then the support was connected to the model itself. I'm going to show you how easy it was to remove. All right, guys. So here's the model that I printed on the CR10. This is roughly 280 millimeters going in the X axis. So as you can see here, the first thing I'm going to do is remove the raft. As you notice, like I said, the model is not even going to be touching the bed. And as you can see from the print here, it's not. 
So the key here is of course supports but the raft as well because see how easily the raft just pops off not using any tools, no nothing and it's coming right off. I'm going to share these raft settings with you which I already made a video on but I'll put a link to that down below in the comment or description section. So as you can see I got the raft removed and here everything's just popping right off and the parts that aren't I'm shaking it a little bit uh, just to kind of loosen it up. I do need to cut this at one point with pliers right there as you can see just to break off the middle piece but the bottom one is still there. So I just keep wiggling it here and the only thing I use the pliers for is to cut it off into sections so it's easier to pop off. So when I just cut it right there, notice that piece on the right side at the end, it will just pop right off. And once I do that I just keep repeating the steps. So you can see how easily the back was removed. Now I'm going to work on the arms and the gun and the head. So I didn't want to speed this up too much because I want you guys to actually look at what I'm doing. So if you notice, the body piece popped right off, the head popped right off. Now I'm going to go ahead and work on the arm. This was a little bit of a challenge, uh, but still, I did not use any tools. And it was a clean removal, as you can see right here. So there you go, guys. My support settings with proof that it works. If you guys have any questions, comments regarding the topic that we just covered today, please leave it in the comment section down below. You know I try to get back to every single one of you guys as best to my abilities. If you're new to the channel, guys, consider hitting the subscribe button. What are you waiting for? Hit that notification bell. Why? So every time we put out a video, it notifies you. We have some great tutorials here to help everybody out in the 3D printing community. If you're a supporter of the channel, thank you, thank you guys so much. It's because of you I'm able to make these videos and keep going. Your support actually does help a lot. Um, and if you guys are in the market for new printers, I'll leave links down below. And like always, good luck and happy printing.